Greetings everyone. It's great to be with you again in this uh, new uh, online context. And today we're celebrating the Annunciation, the feast of that time when Mary was uh, greeted by the angel Gabriel and told of all that God had in store for her. If you're one of our parishioners, you can access your printed copy of the order of service you receive by email. But I'm sure many of you don't need to do that. Today's service will have a little bit of uh, music to accompany us, uh, thanks to our, uh, our faithful parish organist, Kath Drummond, and um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, work on uh, how we present music in our services going forward. Importantly, we're using copyrighted material from a prayer book for Australia, published under the imprint of Broughton Books by E.J. Dwyer's Alexandria and New South Wales in 1995, and the scripture quotations are from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, copyrighted 1989, the National Council of Churches of Christ in the United States, all used by permission. So we're going to begin our service. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Lord, have mercy on us, and write your law in our hearts. By your Holy Spirit. And we pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the train is Sagion. Try Sagion. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. And it's our practice here at St Luke's to say the collect together. We beseech you, O Lord, pour your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's time for our readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God, let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahab said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David. It is too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also. Therefore the Lord will himself give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel, for the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. And today we'll say our prayer by alternate verses. O Lord my God, great are the wonderful things which you have done, and your thoughts which are towards us. There is none to be compared with you. Were I to declare them and speak of them, they are more than I am able to express. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my ears you have marked for obedience. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me that I should do your will. O oh my God, I long to do it. Your law delights my heart. 
I have declared your righteousness in the great congregation. I have not restrained my lips, O Lord, and that you know. I have not hidden your righteousness in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and of your salvation. I have not kept your loving kindness and your truth from the very congregation. Our second reading comes from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desire nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Luke, chapter 1, beginning at the 26th verse. Glory Glory to to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I begin this short talk, can I wish you all the best as we go through this difficult time together. I know that these broadcasts are reaching far beyond the parish. So, wherever you are, may God watch over you and bless you and keep you safe. I fully realise that many of you miss having Holy Communion in the normal manner. And I believe that it is our shared prayer which consecrates the bread and wine. What we do together, what we say, the prayers we say. It's not simply what I do as the priest. It's not my hands that consecrate, but the Holy Spirit and the congregation and priest together. So if you have some bread and wine with you now, or you can go and get some, and you join in the prayer we say together, then I believe that our gracious and loving and generous God 
will also bless the Holy Communion that we share today. If you don't agree, don't do it. But if you can, then feel free to participate in that way, as well as simply listening to what we do. Today, here at St Luke's, we celebrate the Feast of the Annunciation, when the angel Gabriel visited Mary with the news that she would conceive by the Holy Spirit and that her child would be called the Son of the Most High. It's always one of those inexplicable parts of the story of God and human beings that God chooses Mary, a person at that time of whom the society would have thought very little. A woman, even less a young woman, probably of the lower economic classes. And this event takes place not in one of the great cities of the world, such as Rome, for instance, but in the dusty and struggling nation of Palestine, where the Roman government officials were sent as a punishment. This young maiden, of little consequence then, is chosen by God above all others for a sacred task to bring into the world of human beings the incarnate Son of God, whom we identify with the second person of the Holy Trinity. Why this girl? You will never really know, except that she must have passed every test that God would place upon her in choosing only one of which we are acquainted with through Scripture. When she receives the news, she does not resile from it, but instead inquires to, as to how it could possibly be before uttering her most beautiful words. Here I am, a servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. In saying this, Mary is the ultimate example and role model for all Christians. Some have written the church as a whole. In these days, since the virus has, and our response to it, has taken over so much of the world and our lives, I've had to explain to people a number of times about my oaths of obedience to those over me in the church. Couldn't we do this? Couldn't we do that? I'm asked, even after I've explained that the leadership of the diocese has said what I can and what I can't do. The whole notion of obedience seems like it belongs to a past era and it's not so important anymore for a great number of people today. But Mary models obedience and she would go on to play her role in the divine plan because of her obedience. This is one way in which she is a role model for us. This year, in the three-year liturgical cycle, we have the year of Matthew. Of course, Matthew's Gospel contains within it the Sermon on the Mount in chapters 5 to 7. Amazing and wonderful teachings in that great section of Matthew. But how many of us can live by them? The teachings on prayer, on anger, on generosity, on worry, and many more. How many of us are committed to living the way that Jesus calls us to do in those sections? And others, of course, they were just an example. If we have a heart to be obedient to God, then we will make that effort, even when it's inconvenient to live by those teachings. So in terms of obedience, Mary was a great example, a saint in every way we regard that title. And her obedience is something we should aim to emulate in our own lives. Which leads me to remind everyone who is with me now in this broadcast that although Mary was saintly in every respect, as I mentioned, she was also ordinary in the extreme. It's sometimes difficult for us to see ourselves as anything other than very ordinary people and certainly ordinary before God. And that is right. To an extent. But when we see people in the media, prime ministers and premiers and sporting stars and leaders of the church fronting beautiful worship or addressing huge crowds, we should remember that they are ordinary too. And in my life's journey, I've met many people from all walks of life, from the greatest to the least. 
And believe me, they're all people just like you and me. You and I are ordinary people, and yet for all of us, God has a task. We're all called to be God's people, to be witnesses in the world around us, you and me. We're called to be agents of God's mercy and forgiveness in the world, you and me. We're called to be people of compassion and generosity to those in need, every one of us. In the name of Jesus, we are called to bring God's healing and reconciliation to this broken world. We are called to be ambassadors for the kingdom of God and its values in the world, all of us. I know that many of us are almost in a state of shock with what's happening around us now. Things are changing so fast almost every day or every hour. What never changes is the great love that God holds for us and God's desire that we should all come to know that love at work in us. As we think about Mary's call and her obedient acceptance of it, may we also be attentive to our own calling and say in our prayers and in our hearts, let it be with each one of us according to God's word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us affirm the faith of the Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray now for the world and for the church. Based on the intercessions by Catherine Smith, found on catherinesmith.org.uk. Let us pray in faith to God, our Father, for whom nothing is impossible and who hears the prayers of all his children in love and compassion. Loving God, when Gabriel visited Mary and told her your plans for her, she said, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. May we also listen to your life-changing and life-bringing word and rejoice in being obedient to it. May the example of Mary's faith and obedience be the guide and pattern for our own response to your word of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for your church throughout the world. For you, nothing is impossible. We ask that through the power of your spirit, our divisions may be healed, so that in heartfelt unison, we can call each other brother and sister and together seek to bring your kingdom upon earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the needs of our troubled world. For you, nothing is impossible. We ask that through the power of your spirit, the leaders of this and all nations will seek to govern with integrity in your ways of peace and justice for all people. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray for the needs of our own community. For you, nothing is impossible. We ask that through the power of your Spirit, you will be present in the lives of families under pressure and stress, in the lives of those suffering with addictions and poverty, and in the lives of children who don't have the security of a loving home and family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are living in pain or in fear. For you, nothing is impossible. We ask that through the power of your Spirit, you will bring healing and comfort to all who suffer, both physically and mentally. We pray especially for members of our parish who are sick. We remember Brother Martin, Kristen, Stephen, Kevin, Glenn, Kiki, Brother Noel, Edna, Brother Michael, Sam, Mary, Louise, Barbara, Victoria, Father John, and John. Let them know that you are with them and will stay by their side. At this time, we pray for all who are fearful and concerned because of COVID-19 virus. Give to us all your peace and comfort, and Lord, keep us and our loved ones safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all whose lives have honoured Christ, especially St Luke and the Blessed Virgin Mary, and those known to us. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let the light of the church shine upon them. May they rest in peace and oh, rise Lord, in glory. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant Lord, that Lord, we have asked in faith. faith. We, we may by your grace receive through Jesus, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join in saying our parish prayer. Let us pray. God of love, God of mission, you alone bring life to your church. Send to this church of St. Luke your Holy Spirit to give vision for our planning, wisdom in our actions, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in spiritual commitment to you, in love for one another, and in service to our local community. And may all who worship with us know Christ's compassion and love. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. We do not we do presume not to, come to come to your table, table merciful Lord, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled and wandered far off. Let us then ask for mercy, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our greeting of peace. Would you like to stand for the greeting of peace? Christ has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Resurrection and glorious ascension, 
and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing, honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your gifts. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. God our Saviour, your word proclaims our salvation, which we taste in the bread of life. Grant us the humble obedience we see in Mary, that we too may respond as willing servants and bear your word to our world. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. And we pray for God's blessing. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, gladden our hearts by his coming to dwell among us and fill us with joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you today and always. Amen. And we're going to uh, sing the first and last verse of Tell Out My Soul, uh, hymn number 161 from our hymn book. of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Amen. Now let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. 